Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. I want to get you up to date on a big case that was decided about 25 hours ago from when I'm recording this. Uh, and it has shaken the federal government anti-gun crew to its core. This case happened in the Western District of Texas, and here on the screen is the case itself. It's the United States of America versus Jose Gomez Quiros. And real quick, it, the memorandum and the background will get you up to date on everything. It says, this court faces a predicament similar to Plato's allegory of the cave. There are the known knowns. A defendant was convicted of buying a gun while under indictment after the Supreme Court's ruling in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin that defendant asked this court to reconsider the constitutionality of his statute of conviction. The known unknowns, whether the statute preventing a person under indictment from receiving a firearm aligns with this nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation, and the unknown unknowns, the constitutionality of firearm regulations in a post-Bruin world. There are no illusions about this case's real-world consequences, certainly valid public policy and safety concerns exist. Yet Bruin framed those concerns solely as a historical analysis. And this court follows that framework. The background. On June 9, 2020, the defendant was indicted in a Texas state court for burglary, a second degree felony. The defendant subsequently failed to appear for a hearing on the burglary charge and was indicted almost a year later for jumping bail or failing to appear, which is a third degree felony. Late in 2021, while both charges were pending, the defendant attempted to buy an M1911 semi-automatic 22 caliber firearm from a local firearms dealer. To obtain that weapon, defendant denied he was under indictment for a felony when filling out the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives Firearms Transaction Record, the Form 4473. Because the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, NICS, returned a delayed response, the defendant waited seven days and then picked up the firearm on December 3rd of 2021. But less than a week later, Nix informed ATF of the defendant's illegal firearm purchase. Defendant was federally charged in March of 2022 with two counts. Count one, making a false statement during the purchase of a firearm under 18 U.S.C. 922 Alpha 6. And count two, the illegal receipt of a firearm by a person under indictment under 18 U.S.C. 922 in November. A jury convicted him of both counts. One week after his conviction... The defendant moved to set aside the verdict pursuant to Rule 29 of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure and for this court to reconsider his previous motion to dismiss because of the United States Supreme Court's recent ruling in Bruin. The defendant's motion hinges on the constitutionality of 922N November because if the provision is unconstitutional, then defendant's false statement during the purchase of the firearm is immaterial. Okay, Jared, great, you can read. What does that mean in, in today's modern English. What does that mean uh, in layman's terms? All right, so the defendant was under indictment. For those who don't know what indictment is, that's when a grand jury issues what's called, called a true bill. Uh, it is very easy to get an indictment. Uh, defense attorneys aren't allowed in that courtroom. Uh, some of you may have served on grand juries. There are many sayings in different states. It's diff you know a different object, uh, but like states, there are people who say like, uh, you know, a grand jury would indict a ham sandwich or grand juries are so lenient that you can indict a banana peel. It, it, in fact, this judge says uh, grand juries are known to, invite a, uh, to indict a burrito. So it's extremely easy to get an indictment. So because of that, and, you know, hats off to this judge, he took that under consideration and he decided this case based off of Bruin's text, history, and tradition. And when he did that, he could find nothing, obviously in the text of his Second Amendment, but nothing in the history or tradition of this country in which a person indicted, meaning charged, not convicted, with a crime was treated as though he was already convicted. He went through issues like uh, the right to vote. He went through issues with uh, the right to assemble and how if you're indicted, uh, with a crime, then you're not stopped from voting. You're not stopped from uh, assembly. Now, that's different under conviction, which is why the judge ruled the way he did. And how did he rule? Here on the screen is the ruling, and it's spectacular and beautiful. The conclusion, the Second Amendment is not a second-class right. 
no longer can courts balance away a constitutional right. After Bruin, the government must prove that laws regulating conduct covered by the Second Amendment's plain text align with this nation's historical tradition. The government does not meet that burden. Although not exhaustive, the court's historical survey finds little evidence that 922 N. November, which prohibits those under felony indictment from obtaining a firearm, aligns with this nation's historical tradition. As a result, this court holds that Section 922 N. November is unconstitutional. It is therefore ordered that defendant's motion to reconsider is granted and the indictment is dismissed. So ordered on the 19th day of September, Judge David Counts, U.S. District Court, Texas Western District. So this judge, guys, the government gave him very little historical analysis, so he went back and did his own. He went all the way back to, like, uh, the surety laws of Massachusetts, where they tried to take people's rights away. Um, and in cases that were mentioned, it was mentioned in Bruin, of course, by uh, Justice Thomas, the ones that the court could find, the people who were jammed up pr uh, prior to being uh, convicted, happened to all be black. So the judge said, you can't just make a rule to, uh, to, to you know, target certain groups of people. And he went through and did a great job in finding other historical uh, analysis or analyses or analogs that uh, people typically go to when they're talking about uh, taking people's right away from them, uh, and, and including uh, common law. And, and the judge even said that using common law is dangerous because common law evolved over time. And here he said, we're going to look rather at what the colonists excluded from English law when they adopted their own laws. And he said he could find nothing from like the 1600s to the 1800s where uh, people's right to keep and bear arms uh, were taken from them. So good on the judge. I mean, there's not a lot of judges that would go out there and do that. Uh, this is a Trump appointed judge. And he has ruled that that question on the 4473, that if you are under indictment, that that is illegal. That's illegal to, to, to do that. It's unconstitutional. And he even went through that part of the law. Like, when did Congress take that right away from people? And that law uh, evolved several times. First, it was only under, uh, if you were under indictment for a violent crime committed with a firearm. And then Congress changed that to, uh, and it was federally. It wasn't all courts. Then Congress changed it to uh, any crime. And then it was changed to any court. So he could find nothing in the text history or tradition in which people were precluded from keeping their right to bear arms because they were uh, char charged or indicted with a crime. And another gun control drops thanks to the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin case and Justice Thomas's phenomenally written decision. This is big news, guys and gals. ATF is shook to the core with their 4473 because it is one part of it, not the whole thing, one part of it has been found unconstitutional and when the foundation starts to crack or chip, you know what happens. The house of cards falls. We are living a good time right now. I know it takes time, and it pisses all of us off, myself included, that it takes time. But this is a good time, folks. That decision, that one decision, the Bruin decision, is leading to everything else. And it's a good time. If you want to stay in the know of everything that's happening in the post-Bruin era, then hit that subscribe button down below, because Guns and Gadgets puts out news every single day. Most often times two to three times a day, so check back often. And uh, hit that bell icon, toggle that to all notifications because you're supposed to be told when I put out new, uh, new material or go live. And if you found this enjoyable, please hit the thumbs up and share it with others so that other people see it and know it. And I'll see you on the next one. Be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe because that's what it's for. And the federal government is getting it handed to them. Take care, y'all.